On today's show, we will hear about an education course exploring different aspects of God's global purpose and a look at a seasonal segment on the Christmas season. All that and more coming up now on Joy in the City True Stories. Joy in the City is a program highlighting people and organizations having an impact in our city. All too often, we hear about the problems and dysfunction in our culture, but today we are coming with a different approach as we take a look at all the good things going on right here in our community. I'm Bethany Marshall, and you're about to see what God is doing in our city. Recently, we had the opportunity to speak with Keith Crownover about the education course called Perspectives, whose aim is to equip people to spread the gospel all over the world. Well, thank you for joining me today, Keith. And uh, before we get into some of the uh, topic today, I want to get a little information about you. Tell me about yourself, if you would. Uh, happy to. I'm a, a lifelong Blair Countyan, and uh, I also have attended the same denominational church my entire life, which is something that feeds into the discussion about perspectives. Uh, married to uh, my wife, Lori, f 40 years, and uh, have three children and four grandchildren. And we actually had Lori not too long ago on this show mm -hmm. talking about ESL. Yes. Um, okay, so let's get into perspectives. First of all, just talk about what is perspectives. Well, perspectives, they describe perspectives as three things. It's a, a movement, a course, and an organization. Uh, for today's purposes, we'll probably talk about it being a course most of all. But it's interesting that Perspectives is now a worldwide movement, and it actually started in State College. So back in the wow. 70s, I believe. And uh, globally, a, a movement and a course which is taught to uh, educate Christians, uh, the formal title is the world, A Worldwide Perspectives on the Global Christian Movement. So Perspectives for short. So what does this course specifically with this piece of it. What does this course look like? And what, what does it do for those that, that get engaged with it? Well, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, I've attended a church, uh, as I said, my whole life where missionary work was a focus. Uh, had great exposure to missions, uh, Wycliffe Bible Translators, mm -hmm. JARS uh, Aviation. Uh, we actually had uh, locals from in, uh, Irian Jaya come and visit our church once upon a time. And, and uh, just amazing exposure to missions. But what Perspectives does is take you deeper. I think of it as I was raised in this great bubble, the bubble of Blair County, the bubble of attending the same kind of church. Sure. But Perspectives broadens your perspective to see that, again, that worldwide focus. So you start off looking at the history of worldwide missions, which is okay. fascinating. Actually, I, I correct myself. You start off learning the biblical basis for missions. And again, uh, I've served as an elder at my church for many years. I feel that I'm fairly biblically literate, but perspectives is going deeper inside the Word, learning what is God's missional heart. Is that only in the New Testament? Is that only the Apostle Paul? No, it's from Genesis to Revelation, mm -hmm. and it's, it's an amazing course of learning uh, the biblical basis first, the first section. Second section is the history of world missions, then the culture of world missions, which is fascinating, and then looking strategically at world missions. So okay. it's... Um, I believe it's uh, 16 courses uh, in Altoona. We start on January 15th and meet once a week and uh, bring in outside speakers. So we have some very gifted uh, folks in our local area, of course, but we also have the advantage of having people literally from around the world come in. This isn't a local person teaching what he or she's learned. This is people who've been there, done that. And, and again, not in a small way, but some people who have quite impressive uh, resumes of what they've done in the kingdom. So wow. uh, it's, it's really a life-changing course. And in fact, one of the, the sayings they use is, be prepared for your life to change. And that certainly is true. So this is actually taught by people and not sitting watching a video. Correct. A lot of courses are done that way nowadays. Correct. So this is actually people. So there's an interactive nature to the course. Absolutely. How, how many weeks? It's 16. <coughs> 16 weeks. 16 weeks. And, and uh, when I, my wife and I went through Perspectives, uh, we had a gentleman come in to speak about Islam, uh, whose business partner was actually at that time in Egypt, meeting with the Egyptian government about relationships between Christians and Muslims, uh, learning the pillars of Islam, uh, having people come in and speak who have been missionaries in, in South America, where for communion, uh, this people group had no red juice, no grapes, no cranberries. Mm. And uh, how do you serve communion? So looking at the little simple things. Some people groups have no music. 
And so again, it's, it's just fascinating, starting with that biblical basis, looking at the history, understanding the cultural challenges, and then looking at how do we as Christians respond to that strategically? What then shall we do? Who, who can take the course? Is it open to anybody? Who, who's eligible to take the, this course? Well, it's open to anyone. Uh, it's, uh, there are options in taking the course, including those who can take it for college credit. So uh, Lori and I, as uh, older individuals, we didn't go that route. But if a younger person was interested perhaps, uh, or any person interested in perhaps going on and pursuing a, a degree, whether it's a bachelor's degree or master's, I believe these are bachelor level courses, but you can even get college credit for it. So it's very flexible. It can be designed around your preferences in terms of the intensity of the course. Okay. It can be very simple or it could be college credit. So the fact that you mentioned that this can be life changing, mm -hmm. can you give me a story like a testimonial of, of how this has impacted someone, either yourself or someone else that has taken the course, uh, and how it maybe had a, a life-changing impact on them. Sure. Uh, I'll give you three examples, uh, all from our local area. There's literally tens of thousands of more since I'm giving you just Altoona, and people I know personally. Uh, I had a coworker who was very IT-centric. He went through the course. He grew up in a church planning family. In fact, he's left our area. He's moved at least three times since he left the area. And he was a, a technology uh, individual that I knew from my workplace. He went through perspectives and he has been on a mission since then of creating a technology platform to enable Christians in third world persecuted countries to get meaningful employment so that they can support their family, they can support the kingdom work. And his heart went from uh, someone who was very committed, of course, to the kingdom, to somebody who's saying, how can I now, based on what I learned, do? So he's been working on a, a platform from a technology standpoint. He's been engaging with people mostly from India, but other nations, trying to find a way to create and improve uh, the ability for Christians to, to survive, thrive, and to minister uh, in third world countries. Wow. Uh, my wife, Lori, who you interviewed, uh, she and I went through the course, as I mentioned, and uh, earlier in our lives, she had uh, done ESL as a volunteer in the local area with, with a Chinese woman. And after going through perspectives, uh, Lori felt called to uh, help begin at the Altoona uh, English and Culture Club, our local ESL school, which is an interdenominational uh, interchurch ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been very enriching for us. Yeah. And the third way is personal for me, as well as for Lori. Uh, the woman who Lori had done ESL work with, I mentioned was Chinese, she went back to China. But uh, when I went through perspectives, we had connections with a Chinese congregation in State College, and the Lord placed it on my heart to say, what can we do with Chinese students here at Penn State Altoona? And we started and had a thriving outreach to Chinese college students in Altoona. Unfortunately, COVID uh, brought an end to that. But through that ministry, we had several uh, Chinese students come to faith in Christ. Wow. So three stories Amazing. just off the top of my head and those are multiplied all over uh, both here in Altoona and other That's places. Incredible. Yeah. So the first time this episode will show is the beginning of December mm -hmm. and you're starting in January the next course. Yes. Can people still get connected to it at this point or is it too late for registration and so forth? Uh, I, uh, I would say it's never too late to join. <laughs> uh, there is a, a, a deadline to get a discount. Uh, there is a fee for this program. There sure. are also scholarships. So okay. money should not stop someone. If, if the Lord's speaking to you about getting involved, please check it out. Uh, the, dis the discount ends on December 4th, to my recollection. So when we'll be taping this. Mm -hmm. But again, don't let that be an issue. The uh, courses begin on January 15th, and that first night is free to anyone. And in fact, I'll tell you that if, if you showed up on February 7th, if that happens to be a Sunday night, uh, you could still attend for, for no charge. We want people to get exposed to this great uh, information, this great course. But January 15th, our first evening, is especially an evening where uh, we'll have a lot of people come in, including alumni. I myself have been in the opening session at least three times because the speaker is just an amazing, mm. gifted teacher. So uh, January 15th, if you're interested, if you've not yet registered, Check it out. Uh, these will be held at the Altoona Alliance Church's uh, Cafe, is where class will be held Sunday evenings from 5.30 to 8.30, beginning on January 15th. And how do they get the information to, to register, to, to be able to sign up? How do they get connected to that? Well, the best way is through the website, which is uh, www.perspectives.org backslash Altoona. Uh, if you just go to perspectives.org, you can find our class. But if you do backslash Altoona, it'll take you right to our details. You'll get to see the schedule. All the information you need will be right there. So 
I've been in Altoona uh, most of my life, and I find this fascinating. I, I really didn't know anything about it. I actually know the people at Altoona Alliance very well. Uh, they do amazing work there, and, and uh, I also tell Pastor Tim, we need to get the word out about this a little more because I think this is an incredible program, it is. and uh, hopefully we'll get some people connected to you through this, but I'm, I'm so glad at least you would come on, tell us about it, uh, and how it's been, been changing your life as well as others, even in our community. This is really cool. Yeah, and, and Troy, uh, just to, again, recognize ESL. If you'd asked me, talking about this new information to you, if you'd asked me five years ago, is there an immigrant community here in Altoona that we can impact for the gospel? I'd say, I, I probably have to restrain myself from laughing, right? But every Monday night, we have 30 people from around the world here in Altoona learning English, but being exposed to the gospel. Yeah. And that's just, that is to me the best headline, but another yeah. example of how perspectives yeah. has changed uh, some of our kingdom perspectives yeah. here in Altoona. Thank you so much, Keith, for coming today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Impact Productions, a multi-layer technology company providing on-site, online, and in-studio video services. Contact Impact Productions to capture your story. Young children always have a unique perspective on the stories we tell them. Today, we have several children from Transformation Church who walk us through the Christmas story as told to us from Luke 2. Kind of. Jonah. God. Jesus. Uh, God. God. Uh, Joseph. Yeah, Joseph. Joseph. God, God, God. Angel, angel. The wise man? An angel. Joseph? Uh, the angel. God? The angel. An angel. Oh. I don't really remember that. Don't be scared. That she was having a baby? It she was pregnant? Um. They're going to have a son of God. He's going to give birth to the son of God. He said, uh, we're having a baby? That she was going to have a Baby. What? I know. I don't know. What? And he freaked out. Yeah, he freaked out. Surprise. Surprise. I think he was shocked. He was proud. I think that whenever Mary told Joseph that she was pregnant, that he said that we weren't even married yet. Abraham. Bethlehem. Abraham. Abraham. Bethlehem. Has some faith in you. Florida. Uh, Bethlehem. He looked for a house. That he was an inn, a hotel. A hotel. The inn. They went to a hotel, but it was there was no room. The inn. The hotel. In the cow barn. It. There was somewhere they could stay. There was no space. That there's no rooms left. Don't come in. We're full. No room. Um, there's not enough room here. 
But you can go to my stable. There wasn't any room. Yeah, and we had to go to the hospital. The angel star. A star. God. Star. Star. A big star. Clouds. A star. A star. A star. A star. Big stars. Big stars. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, do not be afraid. Glory to the world. Yeah. Glory to the world. <laughs> she said, um, you're just going to die on the cross. The angel said, don't be afraid. Count the stars. Happy birthday, Jesus. Presents. There were three gifts. I know that. It was a duck, a sheep, um, gold, and that drink, and some of those food things. Gold. I think it was the wooden thing where the hay was playing on. The gifts. Gold. Um. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Mary, 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 this is joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. And then this verse, no more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found. I think of that song, and we always sing it at Christmas, and while it is absolutely a wonderful Christmas song, it hit me one day that this is also a second coming song. The fact of the matter is we live today still under much of the curse that happened in Genesis. The fact is when man sinned, a curse came upon the land. A curse became upon man. Man was destined to die when God never created him to die. The ground, the Bible says, was cursed because of man's sin and it began to produce thorns and thistle. Women had uh, pain in childbirth. Man lost his righteousness and ability to um, be in relationship with God. And so this curse of sin had infected everything. It infected humanity. It infected God's creation. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that creation is in frustration. And I began to think about that. There's a great promise in Revelation 22, verse 3, that says this, and there will be no longer any curse. And the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his bond servants will serve him. And this is the, the new Jerusalem, the new earth, this promise that comes. And think about it for a moment. What would it be like without the curse? Wouldn't it be amazing with life without sickness, life without death, life without painful toil, life without war, life without wickedness? See, this is what we look forward to, that one day this curse is going to be removed. You see, this is what we celebrate in this time of the year. Jesus came. Who was Jesus? Jesus was our Redeemer. He was the one who would come and who would redeem us from the curse of sin, the curse of the law. When Jesus came, he came to, to redeem not just fallen humanity, praise God that we are redeemed, but everything that the curse touched, Jesus redeemed. Creation is redeemed, uh, uh, nature is redeemed. There's this redeeming work done by him at Calvary's cross. It is the work of the redeemer that reverses the curse. He reverses and he removes the curse because the Bible says he took the curse upon himself when he went to the cross. When the curse is reversed, there will be toil, but it will no longer be painful toil. When the curse is reversed, the earth will no longer produce thorns and thistles because one day you and I will walk upon a new earth because of what Jesus did. 
when the curse is reversed, no longer will we return from the ground from which we were taken, for we will live forever. The removal of the curse reverses things to what God had intended. And when he comes a second time, the reality of that song, Joy to the World, the reality of that song, we will understand it because it's in that moment where we will understand that rocks, hills, and plains, they're going to resound in joy. Why? Because they've been liberated from captivity. They've been liberated from frustration. Whenever he comes back the second time, sins and sorrows will no longer continue to grow. Thorns won't infest the ground because his blessings will flow as far as the curse and found. You see, it's the celebration of Christmas. We celebrate his birth. But the fact of the matter is, we celebrate his birth in anticipation that one day there will be a second coming of this same Savior, this same Redeemer, and this curse that we've lived under for thousands of years will once and for all finally be removed. Because of the redemptive work of Jesus, whose birth we celebrate this Christmas season, there's going to come a day where he's coming back a second time and that curse will be removed as far as it was found. Everything that the curse of sin touched will be redeemed because of the work of Jesus. And until then, we live in anticipation of that moment when he comes and there's no more sins, no more sorrows, and his blessings flow as far as the curse has been found. Celebrate him this season and celebrate what's to come. God bless you. As a teenager, Christmas changes from the spirited child who can't wait to rip open the next gift to a lethargic young adult who often dismisses most gifts they get. Today, we want to highlight what Christmas Day is like for some teens in our community. I got, I got coal once. I got coal wrapped in wrapping paper. Oh, the strangest gift I ever received was cheese. Let me tell, can I tell my backstory though? Because like, my aunt gave me cheese for Christmas, but we were supposed to be making something and I think I had asked her to make it for me and she was like, okay, yeah, she'll make it. But then the next board that she gave me, like a block of cheese and said, well, you wanted to make it, you wanted this, so you're gonna help me make it. I was like, what? Chocolate from around the world. Deodorant. Socks. A toothbrush and a toothpaste. It's not as exciting anymore, cause like, you're kind of expecting what presents you're gonna be getting. There's a huge difference. Um, probably not getting it as much hyped up as it used to be. Um, sometimes Christmas morning doesn't even feel like Christmas morning, but as a kid it was like a whole ordeal. Teenagers still get gifts and stuff like that, but like it's not as it used to be. I used to be like waking up early. I used to be up all the time before everybody was up. Like, wake up, let's go we opening these gifts. Now it's just like, okay, it's Christmas. We got them gifts there, but we, I'm about to eat before I open the gifts, you know? But yeah. There's nothing, like there's no joy anymore. Like I know that my mom said <laughs> Stuff like that, so. Whenever I was a kid, I would like always run down the stairs and like be excited. And now I just like walk down the stairs and I'm not as excited like I used to be. So honestly, it's about the same because I have two little siblings, so I have to be all about it still. So, you know. They're gonna be so mad at me. I don't like the apple pie. <laughs> I don't like the apple pie. Oh my gosh. No, because I don't like corn. I don't care. Okay, listen, a lot of people's gonna come for me. I don't like corn. I do not like corn. Like, who eat, Who even eats corn? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. But every single time I get a plate for Christmas, everybody wanna put corn on my plate. I told you I don't like corn, like. Sauerkraut. Like, probably like cranberry sauce stuff. It just looks gross, I'm sorry. Like, no. Coleslaw. 
collard greens. I don't like them. Elf. Oh, Elf. I love Elf. Oh, and the live Grinch. Edward Scissorhands? Would that be considered a Christmas movie? <sighs> I'm embarrassing myself right now, but when I was younger, I used to have the biggest crush on Arthur. He is so sweet. <laughs> no. But yeah, that's my favorite Christmas movie. Elf, Nightmare Before Christmas, and A Christmas Story. Home Alone, probably. <laughs> Well, I want a guitar, so it's kind of expensive. But if I don't get that, I want to get concert tickets, so. My big item is probably the three pairs of shoes I'm getting. <laughs> I already know I'm getting them. <laughs> hey dudes. Like, they're these really comfortable, like, slip-on sneakers. They're kind of like a new trend this year. Probably stuffed animals. Um, I don't really want anything this year. I just want, like, Money or clothes. Tickets to see um, an artist of mine in concert. It, I've like loved them for a while, and to finally get it was like really nice. Who's the artist? Luke Bryan. Is it your favorite? My dear. I got Harry Styles tickets for Christmas last year, so I'd probably say that because that was really fun. I remember when I was like six or seven and I got a bike and I really wanted that bike. So that's why I was so excited because I got the dream bike. <laughs> um, I would say a blanket. Even though it's just a blanket, I really like blankets. So it was like kind of cool. My dog, um, he's just, he was a really good dog and I really appreciate that. And that was the best Christmas gift. It's really fun. My blanket, let me tell you why. <laughs> it's three big reasons. It's blue, because my favorite color is blue and purple, and then it's also purple, and it's warm and fuzzy and soft, and then it has Princess Tiana. Oh my gosh, all over. <gasps> what? That's my, that was the best gift I ever got. I don't care, no, nothing can top it. Not even $5,000, like what? I love me some Princess and the Frog, like, mm -mm. That's all the time we have today. Thanks for watching Join the City True Stories. Let me encourage you to watch other episodes of people and organizations having an impact on our community on ABC 23 at 5.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. every Sunday. You can also catch us each week on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Until then, be encouraged because God is moving in our city.